Let's uh, return now to the reaction to my interview with the Israeli ambassador to the UK, in which she suggested that Tel Aviv will not accept a two-state solution with the Palestinians. Here's what Zippy Hotovelli told me yesterday. Two-state solution? What you Is there did. still a chance for a two-state solution? I think it's about time for the world to realise the Oslo paradigm failed on the 7th but, of October, and we need to build a new one. And in but, order to build a new one... But does that new one include the Palestinians living in a state of their own? Does, think, is that what it includes? I think the biggest question is, what type of Palestinians are on the other side? This is what Israel no, realised in the 7th of October. Though? The answer is absolutely no, and I'll tell you why. Well, then because how can there be moment, peace? In, no, how can there be peace in you, the reason there is no peace Israel. is because the Palestinians... How could, without offering Mark, a state to Palestine, how Mark, can there be peace in Israel? Israel knows today, and the world should know now, the reason the Oslo Accords failed is because the Palestinians never wanted to have a state next to Israel. They want to have a state from the river to the sea. So the two-state so solution is dead. Why are you obsessed with a formula that never worked, that created this radical people in the other side? Why are you obsessed with that? Well, I'm joined now by uh, the Palestinian ambassador to the UK, Hussam Zomlot. Uh, good evening. Thank you very much for being with us. Um, so. No two-state solution, she says. After everything that has happened and is happening, do you envision an independent state of Palestine alongside the state of Israel? I don't envision. This is reality. We are a people, and the people live on, on our land. Uh, we have uh, legitimate uh, representation and government, that is the PLO. Our platform is very clear. There is international consensus on the need that Israel ends uh, its occupation uh, uh, that began in 67, and that a state of Palestine is established uh, with Jerusalem as its capital and a fair and legal resolution to the issue of refugees. <clears throat> right. That uh, that, uh, 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 that interview with the Israeli ambassador uh, uh, should not have been shocking to you, uh, Mark. Uh, uh, I think uh, what she said was not really the shocking part because she has been saying this for a long time. Right. Well, and, her and, point and, her, and her government yeah. was saying this for a long time. Right. I, I'm really shocked that you were shocked and the rest of the world, the UK government and everybody else was shocked. I mean, this has been happening for, uh, for decades, uh, Mark, not just by Israeli words, right. by Israeli deeds. Right. On her point is that everything changed on October the 7th, the murderous attack on October the 7th. And she's basically saying, why should we <clears throat> negotiate a two-state solution? Yeah, because before the October the 7th, the two-state solution was being really implemented by her government. I mean, uh, look at uh, who she is. Just uh, for example, she was the Minister of Settlements before she arrived to the UK as the ambassador. And Israel has uh, increased its settlement building in the occupied West Bank <clears throat> by 500 percent while we were in the middle of the Oslo peace process too achieve a two-state solution. We signed the Oslo process in 1993. Uh, there were uh, uh, less than 120,000 Israeli illegal settlers. Today we're talking about 750,000 illegal settlers. The West Bank is dotted all over the place, and many right. commentators are saying Israel right. has succeeded to undermine the possibility of any two-state solution. The question, Mark, <clears throat> the question is, uh, 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 why the world has, has failed to take any action during all these years? The very people that they are bombarding in Gaza and displacing, you're talking about more than two-thirds of Gaza has been completely uh, displaced. Uh, a reliving of the Nakba uh, 75 years ago. And by the way, I'm from right. Gaza. I'm from Gaza. I, yeah. know my, I know my family and my parents and grandparents. Uh, this is the right. first time in history that the same refugees are being re made, made refugees again and again and displaced again right. and again. Now, with you, a mass, you are mass... from Gaza. I, yeah. know you're from, I know you're from Gaza. Um, and isn't the problem this, that Hamas won the, the last election in 2006, I think it was. Hamas is committed <clears throat> to the destruction of Israel. Hamas carried out the attack on October the 7th. And support for them across the West Bank is increasing at the expense of the Palestinian Authority. So isn't that the big <clears throat> problem for you? No, Hamas, uh, Hamas is not part of the Palestinian political uh, system now. The Palestinian people have a state in the international system recognized by the majority but, of, of the world. But, and but the they government, seem to be winning and the support. You asked me, polls, let me answer, let me answer. And yeah, the, yeah, the, of course, the government, but I just want to say the polls suggest they are gaining support <clears throat> since October the 7th. 
Uh, well, I didn't see the polls, but uh, 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 that would uh, make you and us uh, and all of us think, think uh, why why people uh, see no hope in diplomatic engagements and in political conversations and processes, because uh, the day before uh, October uh, the seventh, for uh, a period of 30 years, Israel used every single opportunity to deprive people of any hope towards uh, a different future, of stealing more land, of displacing more people, of demolishing more houses. You're talking about numbers, marks, and over a sustained period of time. So, and all, so, of a sudden, so, all of a sudden, we are surprised that an Israeli ambassador says absolutely not for two states, so, absolutely so, not for a so Palestinian state. Why, so, why so, Mark, Mark, why, yeah, yeah. why, so, why so do... Why, mm. well, let me, sorry, uh, let me ask, we're going to run out of time soon, but, um, you know, the question is, if there is a new Israeli government that may want to talk about it. Where is the legitimacy for your, for your body, the Palestinian Authority? Support is weak. It's considered to be corrupt. No elections. I just want to ask you, where is the legitimacy? Were any talks to even be considered? You know, this has been the, I have to say to, to you, Mark, this has been the Western governments and media approach all along. Uh, you know, uh, the problem is the Palestinian oh. leadership. It was Yasser Arafat, remember, they they besieged him for years and then uh, killed him. And we have to look at the Palestinian leadership, change it. The Palestinian people have very clear, legitimate representation. The PLO is the organization that represents every Palestinian inside and outside. We, I sit here as the head of the PLO office to the UK. I was as the head of the PLO office in the US, the PLO is the legitimate re representation of the Palestinian people. Right. We have leadership that are ready until this very moment, as I'm speaking to you, the PLO is committed to international resolutions that includes the two-state solution, ending Israel's right. occupation. Until this moment, we are committed to a negotiated two-state solution. It is Israel that, on the other side, has the likes of Ben Gvir, Smotrich, and the Israeli right. ambassador Final here, question. who are supremacists. So please don't talk to me about partners. If Israel, and when Israel is ready, the Palestinian people have sufficient institutions to engage. Right. right, last question. What happens after this war, do you think? What happens to Gaza? What happens going forward? The first thing uh, that we need to do is to uh, reach an immediate, comprehensive, permanent ceasefire. Because we cannot even engage in the day after without stopping the carnage, this mass murder, mass destruction of everything. You're talking about more than a quarter of a million houses in Gaza destroyed. It's going to take us generations to rebuild all that. So we need to stop that, uh, first and foremost. And number two, we can never, ever assess the day after unless we go back to the day before, the day before October 7th, and make sure we have answers to the illegalities that have lasted for a long time. We stop the Israeli machine of ethnic cleansing right in front of your cameras in Jerusalem. Remember Sheikh Jarrah in the West Bank, the settler that, violence, that, the settler violence that is wreaking havoc all over our villages, depopulating entire villages in the West Bank. People are talking about Gaza, but it's also happening in the West Bank. Once we decide on the day before and recognize all that has led us to where we are, then we drill backward. And I believe I the only solution, the only solution is one state of Palestine, end of Israel's occupation, the implementation of the international consensus. And I believe but it's hard to think it's hard to think that Israel is going to think about the day before. Well, they have to, uh, as happened with all other nations, as ha uh, happened with white South Africans and the apartheid regime, as happened right. in all other conflicts. You've got to think seriously that your option of military solutions, of okay. oppression and repression, did not work for 75 years and will never work. It's only answering people's legitimate rights that will do. Ambassador, thank you very much for coming on the uh, programme. I appreciate it.